Thank you, Madam President. Now, Michigan's certified presidential vote tally shows that Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton by 10,704 votes. I think we can all agree that it's been a very, very long election process to get to this point. Regrettably, Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein, in cooperation with former Michigan Democratic Party chair Mark Brewer, wished to make it even longer via the submittal of an unnecessary recount request to the Michigan Bureau of Elections and by filing a suit in federal courts to ensure that the recount happens. Attorney General Bill Schutte is leading the state effort to expose the dubious basis for the recount petition, but the involvement of the federal government by Jill Stein and Mark Brewer is a bit more problematic. United States District Judge Mark Goldsmith, an appointee of President Obama, issued an order shortly after midnight on, uh, what was it, yesterday I believe it was, um, to start a manual recount of 4.8 million votes in eight days. Electoral college votes must be certified by December 13th for our electors to vote on December 19th. The order was clearly an attempt to delay the vote count so that Michigan electors would not be able to cast their 16 electoral college votes for Donald Trump. There are two problems with this order. Number one, Michigan votes have already been certified. And number two, Judge Goldsmith's ruling is outside of his jurisdiction to rule on electoral selection per Article 2, Section 1 of the United States Constitution, which states that each state shall appoint in such a manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors. Clearly, the federal government has no jurisdiction in the manner by which a state allocates votes in an elector or allocates its electors. So regardless of these efforts, Michigan election results have been certified. Michigan's 16 electors will be voting for the winner of the presidential election, Donald Trump, as members of the Electoral College on December 19th. Valid recount efforts by parties who have true grievances to reconcile are indeed important to pursue. That is not the case with this recount effort. So what is the end game being pursued by Mark Brewer and Jill Stein? Perhaps the end game is merely a mea culpa for G Jill Stein, who received 50,700 Michigan votes that would otherwise have likely have gone to Hillary Clinton. More than enough votes to overcome Hillary Clinton's 10,704 vote deficit in Michigan, although the same might be said for Gary Johnson's impact upon Donald Trump's results. Perhaps the end game is to promote the national popular vote movement, which would undermine the Electoral College that protects states' rights and has served us well since our founding. Electors in Michigan are getting hammered by thousands of emails from out-of-state agitators demanding that they cast their Electoral College vote for Hillary Clinton, not Donald Trump. Many of these emails rep reference the national popular vote. Now, perhaps the end game is to simply create chaos and distract us from the flurry of last gasp agency directives issued by the Obama administration. Perhaps the goal is to establish a basis for false claims of illegitimacy throughout the Trump presidency as a, a means of diluting the clear mandate for government reform conveyed by voters. Whatever the end game may be for Jill Stein and Mark Brewer, the former chair of the Michigan Democratic Party, as Americans, I say that we use their actions as a call to action. If we're going to be forced to do an unnecessary and expensive recount, let's use it as a catalyst to fight voter fraud throughout our state and hopefully throughout our nation. And let's start with the 392 of 662 Detroit precincts in which the number of ballots in precinct poll books does not match the machine printout. Under Michigan law, these votes were counted in the final Michigan vote tally, but they cannot be recounted, a convenient circumstance for anyone not interested in recounting votes in a particular precinct. This discrepancy has been blamed on faulty optical scanners that require multiple passes of a single ballot through the machine. If this is the case, then the vote count on the faulty machine is supposed to be adjusted by the poll worker when this happens. There should be no difference between the poll book ballot count and the machine ballot count. Another explanation for this discrepancy could be that multiple ballots not tracked in the poll books were inserted in the machine or a single ballot was passed through the voting machine multiple times in the interest of committing voter fraud. Whatever the true cause, it is clear that we need to have poll watchers at these precincts in future elections. 
We need to preserve the principle that one citizen equals one vote, and it's my hope that each of you will join me in this pursuit. I'd like my remarks added to the journal, please. Thank you, Senator Kolbeck. Your remarks will be printed in the journal.